Hey folks! Today we're having a look at um, a place called Freiburg and this is in Germany. Okay, this is the best place to study when looking and talking about urban sustainability and it's your case study if you're studying AQA, GCSE Geography and it's for paper two. So Freiburg is an amazing city and I'm going to talk you through the social, economic and environmental aspects of it so that you've got plenty should this come up as a sort of longer six or even a nine mark question. So if you break your page into three, leaving a bit of space at the top, and if you put the heading social, then economic, and then finally environmental. Don't forget that N, it's easy to forget. And then for my students, I always, um, I just pop in some reminders of what those words mean. So environmental is obviously anything to do with nature, kind of physical geography. Um, economic is anything to do with money and kind of business, you know, and uh, yeah, kind of industry. And then social is anything to do with people of all ages and sizes. Okay, so the key thing to start with um, that's really, really important, and we'll come back to this later on, we draw a big sun, is that Freiburg is the sunniest city in Germany. It gets the most sunshine of any city in the whole country, okay? Um, which is great for solar energy because that's what they base a lot of their economy around. And if we start by just kind of looking mainly at the key things that they've done, they have, and I'll put this over on this side, so I'm going to draw an arrow. They've massively reduced their electricity um, needs from other types of energy. So they're using solar hugely, uh, which is really, really good. They've also massively, they're an example to all of us, massively reduced car journeys. Uh, when I last checked, this was... 30,000 less car journeys, okay? And then the last one, and this is the most impressive, is they have also reduced waste. So the kind of rubbish that you put in the bin or you recycle, um, it is down by 88%, okay? 88%, which is incredible. So let's look at what they've done and how they've done that. So on the social side, we have got a population of 220,000 people, which is pretty similar to Portsmouth. I teach in a school near Portsmouth. So for my students, we'll write the population is similar, slightly less, but similar to Portsmouth. Okay, um, they have, and this is really unusual for cities in most countries, but especially in Germany, they have 400 kilometers, sorry, I'll say that again, 400 kilometers, which is, or kilometers, which is a really long way, um, of basically cycle paths and walking paths. So these are not for cars. These are not roads you can I draw someone walking their dog. Not very good at dogs, but let's have a go. Oh, it's quite a big dog, actually, as it goes. There we go. Um, actually, it's more like a pram now, but there we go. Um, yeah, draw someone walking their dog. These are beautiful, tree-lined, you know, leafy, uh, really lovely green areas that they've put in place to encourage people to walk. So we'll write, let's draw an arrow and we'll put cycle paths. These are different. So cycle paths and walking paths, not the two together. And walking paths. And these are all connected to where people live and where they go to school and where they go to the shops. So this has massively, let's put another arrow, increased 
everyday sort of exercise. So just getting to school, getting to work has become part of people's exercise programs and healthy living, which we all, we all need to focus on. That's really good. Okay, so that's kind of on the social side. We will bring people back in a bit more when we look at economic as well and, and environmental. But yeah, just for people that's there. Now, if you are living there and you do your composting, for example, you know, you put your green waste in, a, in the green waste bin or you use textile nappies if you have a baby, um, you get money. You get money from the government. So uh, if I draw like a bag of money, there are financial rewards. Financial rewards for two different things, for textile nappies, so that's cloth nappies, so that's reusable nappies isn't it, where you use them and you wash them and use them again as opposed to you know filling up landfill with uh, you know huggies, whatever, um, textile nappies, or, and the other one was for composting, composting green waste and sort of looking after the environment not filling it up into landfill not only that but this is the biggie this is the one that i think makes freiburg stand out as a really uh, forward-thinking economy there are 1500 environmental businesses now we have our fair share of environmental businesses but not in such a small place. Imagine 1,500 environmental businesses in Portsmouth. That's far, far more than we actually have. Uh, and these businesses directly employ 10,000 people. Okay, so we have another arrow. We have 10,000 stick person employed. Okay. I'll just put some windows in to remind myself that's a business, not a house. There we go. Yeah, so it's employing, you know, a good deal, actually, of the local population. That's a big proportion. And basically what they do with these businesses is they build and design and work on the research and development of solar panels. And these solar panels are how they get their electricity uh, so powering their lights or you know charging your phone just draw like electricity um, it's actually from things like solar energy or biomass is another one which is very common or biogas which is where they use plant material to essentially create a gas that can then be burnt um, in a clean way, draw a leaf to remind us of that, without creating you know, lots of harmful gases. And all of this powers, draw another arrow, and this time I'm just gonna draw like a regular house, like this. Um, and it powers 28,000 homes which is incredible. So loads of statistics for you there. In geography, you 100% get better grades, higher marks on answers if you use data. By data, I mean these numbers. Those numbers that I'm throwing in here, they're critical. Obviously, you need to point, evidence explain each one, but hugely helpful. Now, if you really want the, the headline news, you have to look at what they've done environmentally. And the first thing I want you to do is draw a tree. And they have planted, and this is this is a huge number, so bear with me, 44,000 new trees planted since 1970. Now obviously, depending on the year you're watching this, <laughs> that number will have changed slightly, but yeah. 44,000 trees planted since 1970, which has resulted in an increase in green spaces, which we know is so beneficial for people. 
which has equaled an increase also in wildlife. And that's incredible, you know, and that's obviously reduced, you know, or improved air quality, reduced stress, it's increased leisure, it's just all good news. If you want to park your car, okay, if you want to park your car, they've made it very difficult. If you want to park your car, one space is £20,000 per year. So that's a huge amount of money. Okay, I think it's per year. Might not, might be actually that you can buy it for that. But it's still a staggering amount to just park your car. It's made it to the point where it's not really feasible for a lot of people, and and it's also slightly frowned upon. You know, if you can get around by bike, all the better. When it rains over in Freiburg, rainwater is harvested, or collected. You can use the word harvested if you want um, and used in homes now you can use it used in homes it can be used as gray water so things like running your washing machine or flushing your toilet you know where you don't need crystal clear you know drinkable water and that reduces demand on fresh water which is amazing okay so that's super good um, then if you can draw the recycling symbol, something a bit like that. Um, I think I put it up here, but 88% of all waste is recycled. And actually that deserves a few exclamation marks, which is amazing. Far higher than anywhere that I've ever been, actually. Um, and then finally, they have an integrated transport system, an ITS. I'll write it in here, integrated transport system. So how we draw this, okay, it is basically a tram. So if you draw almost like the front of like a train, I suppose. Um, it runs on rails, so kind of a bit like a train, a bit like a, um, it's just really hard to draw this, but uh, yeah, kind of something like that. Um, put some windows in, make it a bit clearer. Uh, now this tram, obviously it's powered, by renewable electricity from solar, from bio uh, gas or biomass. Um, it's cheap and it's accessible. So residents are able to access it, use it, uh, jump on and off it. It's really helpful. Okay, it's called a tram. Now we have trams, not locally to us where we live and where I teach, but there are trams in lots of UK cities. They're becoming increasingly popular actually but if you get asked about a transport system then you can look into the one in Freiburg in Germany as that's a really good option so there you go nice and quick Freiburg Germany everything you need to know lots of data best of luck